All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kev. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 96. And after the exceptional questions and response that I received to last week's episode on the plug granite containers found at the Step Pyramid Complex in Saqqara, I decided to follow up with some major research revelations that really got me excited and they must be brought to light. And for anyone that's interested, I just started a members only channel here at the Land of Chem that will feature never before seen footage and all of the newest research releases. So here is a sneak peek at what you can expect with your exclusive members only access. All right, here are a few particles that were discovered during the recent scanning electron microscopy analysis of samples from 13 different locations across the Giza Plateau taken by the ACIDA project. This one, a microspherule. This one here, a metal fragment coming from the quote unquote trial passages. Another flawless microspherule here. This one coming from the pit around the central pyramid. And another spectacular metal particle also from one of the central pyramid pits. And I'll be presenting the preliminary chemical analyses along with some jaw dropping never before seen footage in episode one on the Land of Chem members only channel. So if this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Remember to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the two episodes that premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, like, comment, and check out thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. To begin, the following comes from the work of Mark Lehner in his book, The Complete Pyramids, a tremendous, comprehensive overview of the conventional research and archaeology on the Egyptian pyramids. And I highly recommend this book for anyone that is interested in digging into this type of material. There is some extremely valuable information contained in this book. You just have to know what you're looking for. So with that being said, here are a few details that are important to understand. First, and I will quote here. The final vault was of granite, referring to this container that you can see here, which is the oldest picture that I could find. With these four grooves, one, two, three, and four, still being visible. And this was a part of the plug removal system. And I'll show you a picture in just a moment so you can see what this component looks like now. But Lauer found evidence that there had been an earlier one of alabaster and a pavement of diorite or schist. Numerous fragments of these costly materials were found packed around the vault. And I mentioned this before back in Sunday Site Visit 9, that there were tons, and I mean that literally as in the weight of the material, tons of white calcite crystal that were removed from the primary chamber and the subterranean tunnel system and buried beneath the sands in the northern court of the Step Pyramid Complex. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, they removed the fragments of this crystalline calcite material during the modern excavations and then buried it in the sand. And there was way more than just a container made of this stone inside of the structure. Yusuf, my guide from Egypt, found a piece as we were walking through the northern court that had tube drilling in the fragment. So whatever was down there, was completely destroyed and then buried again intentionally. And here is a picture of what the plug component and the container look like now. And you can see here that the edges of the plug have been smashed off and the four grooves are no longer evident. This to me is once again an indication of intentional destruction to remove any evidence of the function of these components. Second, and I will resume quoting here. Mummy parts were retrieved from the vault. Underneath outer coarse linen and finer linen had been used to model tendons and bones, a technique characteristic 
of the most ancient mummies of the Old Kingdom. However, recent radiocarbon dating shows them to be many centuries younger than Djoser. So they did find some quote-unquote mummy parts inside of this container. But it wasn't Djoser, and I will be coming back to this at the end of the video. Next up, regarding the southern quote-unquote tomb and the container found therein, and I will quote again here. The granite vault is similar to the one under the pyramid, but it is much smaller, and its interior was covered in green traces of copper. What was placed in this vault? Too small for a human burial. And then he goes on to speculate about the symbolic, fictive purposes for this container. Again, clearly not a burial sarcophagus for a human. So it must have been, quote unquote, symbolic. And I absolutely love this classic trademark of archaeology when they have absolutely no idea what something is or what it was used for. They just say that it must have been for a symbolic or religious function. But let's not skip over the most important detail here, that the interior of this red granite plugged container was covered in copper. Now we're talking, and I'll bring you this. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have the new sixth degree Green Lion logo, the fifth degree Central Pyramid Hydrochloric Acid logo, the new second edition print copy of the Land of Chem book, this beautiful new Egyptian blue edition, signed copies, extremely rare, only 89 copies in existence of the original first edition purple orchid paper print of the Land of Chem book are also available all at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for the support. And let me quote again a few things here regarding the uses for copper tubing as an ideal choice for natural gas pipelines. First, copper has been proven to withstand high temperatures without experiencing any damage or deformation over time. Additionally, copper is resistant to corrosion from acids and other chemicals commonly found in these gases such as methane or ethane, making it a reliable option for long-term use. Copper also offers superior flexibility compared to other materials like steel or aluminum. This means that it can easily accommodate bends and curves in your pipeline system without risking any leaks or ruptures due to stress on the material. Copper pipes are designed to last for decades without needing any repairs. So is this what we are really looking at inside of this red granite container? A copper methane gas container that was plugged at the top and the outside of the copper container was then encased in red granite blocks to increase the resistance to high internal pressures. I hope you're starting to see what was really going on inside of this pyramid. And that brings me back to the mummy that I mentioned at the beginning of today's episode. So this is what they found that is supposedly the mummified left foot of the Pharaoh Djoser. Finally, evidence of a pharaonic burial inside of a pyramid. Well, you heard at the beginning of the episode that Laner already put a nail in that coffin, pun intended but I wanted to expand on that point a little bit more. And let me read you this. From the article, a reinvestigation of the remains thought to be of King Djoser and those of an unidentified female from the Steppe Pyramid at Saqqara. Abstract here. Human remains found in the granite chamber beneath the Steppe Pyramid at Saqqara by B.G. Gunn and J.P. Lauer, together with the skull and two postcranial bones of an unidentified female found at another place in the Steppe Pyramid, were re-examined macroscopically, radiologically, histologically, and histomorphometrically, and by radiocarbon dating. The embalming technique of the fragments alleged to be of those of Djoser did not conform with that of the Old Kingdom. Histology showed a remarkable preservation of soft tissues. Macroscopic examination and histomorphometric analysis revealed different ages for individuals represented by the single fragments. Radiocarbon tests demonstrated various dates. In no fragment, however, corresponding to the Third Dynasty date, 
On the other hand, the defleshed bones of the unidentified female gave a date some hundred years earlier than the range of 2700 to 2600 BC accepted for the third dynasty. The supposed remains of Djoser can be considered as belonging to the Sa'it late period or early Ptolemaic secondary burials inside the pyramid. And I will read that one more time. The supposed remains of Djoser can be considered as belonging to secondary burials inside the pyramid. The bones of the unidentified female were either from a burial deposited before the third dynasty, or if they belong to the pyramid of construction, then the dating of the third dynasty should be pushed back about 300 to 500 years earlier. So that mummy, ladies and gentlemen, that ain't Joser. And the other burials found inside of this structure aren't even from the same time period. They are before the concept of the step pyramid was ever even designed. So now we have strong evidence to corroborate what I said in last week's video, that long after this methane manufacturing complex at the step pyramid of Saqqara was no longer functional, it was inherited by the dynastic Egyptians and repurposed as a storage place for ancient artifacts and burials. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 96, Copper Line Methane Gas Containers. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, Sunday Site Visit 24, featuring an investigation of the Western Shaft and Primary Reaction Chamber of the Bent Pyramid in Dashur. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com. Don't forget, the Land of Chem members-only channel with exclusive content that you will not see anywhere else. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's video, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.